Transor i Bay Gaerdydd. Welcome to Cardiff Bay. I'm Tony. I'm a local tour guide known as the Diplomat. And today we're going to have a brief history of the bay when it was called Cardiff Docks. Around 1794, Lord Bute built the Glamorganshire Canal. It changed Cardiff. It brought the iron ore and the coal and the timber down from the hills of Wales. This is the former site of that very canal, which functioned until about 1944. And because of the debt of World War II, there was no money to regenerate it. So it was filled with the rubble of bombed buildings in Cardiff. Once the canal was functioning, ship merchants and coal merchants began to fill up the premises and build new buildings in Cardiff. So much so that we have our own bourse or stock exchange called the Coal Exchange, which is where we'll go to next. Here, the very first cheque for a million pounds was written, supposedly by an American buying coal for the French Navy. Here we are at the Coal Exchange. Built and opened in 1886, it became the commercial centre of Cardiff where ship magnets and coal magnets made their fortune. Cardiff has two amazing museums, the National Museum of Wales and the Museum of Cardiff, formerly the Cardiff Story. At one point, when the coal exchange was opened, it was said that the museum could be housed in the basement here, but sadly nothing came of it. Because no museum has ever been built here, we'll now go to the Pierhead building, which is the nearest thing that Cardiff has to a docks museum. Now we've reached the Pierhead building, built by Lord Bute as his headquarters for the canal, the railways, and the docks. He would look out over the docks from his office and enjoy the realm that he owned. It was built in red brick and it gave Cardiff one of its earliest nicknames, Terracottaopolis, Red Brick City. So we're in between the Pierhead building and the Norwegian church, famous for Roald Dahl, the author, and also a commemoration to Captain Scott of Antarctica. This, the Norwegian church, represents the sailors that came from Scandinavia. Originally, it was built in 1868 at a different dock past the Senedd building. And in 1987, Roald Dahl, the author who was christened here, was the catalyst to get it renovated to this spot. In the shadow of the Norwegian church is the Captain Scott Memorial. In 1910, Captain Scott sailed from Cardiff to try to be the first explorer to reach the South Pole. But when he got there, five weeks earlier, the Norwegian explorer, Roald Amundsen, had planted the Norwegian flag. And the Norwegian flag flies above his head this very day.
As you can see, Cardiff Bay still attracts thousands of visitors. And it's important that the city preserves its history. As I've shown you and you've learned from today's walkabouts.